Hello everybody! Welcome back to Mega's Big Adventure! Yay, me! <laughs> I'm the most important in the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think my mic is a bit loud, sorry. It just blew out now. Um, yeah, welcome back to Hell's Bells. I'm your dungeon master, Maz, and I use they, them. And I'm here to take this all tiefling party on a trip around the plains. However, not all tieflings are created the same anymore because thank you Discord for reversing the image, it's modern kinans. We have got new tiefling subraces in this book. If you haven't got it, go pick it up, it's awesome. We get to get books from wizards because we're special, but you can go buy it, that's fine. Um, let's meet everyone, see if they're using a variant, uh, what their character's name is, uh, what pronouns they'd like to you to use when you're telling, talking about how great they are. Let's start with my friend and yours, Hadil. Hi, it's me, your friend Hadil. Um, my required pronouns are Your Excellency and Your Highness. Also, she and her is fine. I prefer the first ones, though. So. Um, I play Mika, a swashbuckling rogue. I am now 10 years old. Thank you for all the birthday wishes and all of the <laughs> gifts. I have completely trashed them now. <laughs> Um, Lisa, hi. I am Lisa. I uh, go by she, her, uh, and I play Mercy, who is a shadow sorceress uh, swapped at birth with a human baby in Ravenloft. And now she's in Sigil and everything's great and nothing bad is happening. Of course, of course. Uh, TK, hi. Hello, it's TK. Um, I am playing, uh, oh, sorry pronouns they them uh i am playing gil a zariel descent um tiefling paladin who is also in sigil or sigil and also has nothing bad happening to him ever because he's planning two parties <laughs> <laughs> we're very excited he just ordered all the decorations and all the food so <laughs> i don't know how long they're gonna sit in the <laughs> I was waiting for a party, but he paid for them, so we're gonna eat them. I mean, did he pay for them, or did somebody else? Someone mm. did. There are deposits down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shauna, hi. Hi, uh, Shauna. She, her. I play Levity, a uh, Glacia Tiefling, drunken master monk, and is probably the one that Gil had pay money for all the stuff. So, <laughs> part two of the planning committee. Yeah. <laughs> There's no party without Levity and Gil planning it. <laughs> Someone that's definitely not interested in a party is Dirge. Hi, Holly. Hello. I play, I'm Holly. Uh, you may call me she, her, and, or person, or whatever, or Dirge, who is a uh, bard um, of the College of Whispers and a dust man and just wants to bring everyone to the true death, which is super fun. <laughs> <laughs> And Dirgy's partner in crime at the moment, the Mean Girl duo. Hi, Kayla. Right. Hi. Uh, you my can't name's... sit with us. Yeah, you can't sit with us. <laughs> Every but day do, we do wear we, black. Do we want to? <laughs> Probably not, no. <laughs> uh, my name's Kayla, pronouns she, her. I play Pentar. Um, I play uh, Altered Variant from Mordenkainen's. I made up for Zugmoy ancestry. Um, Pentar's doing horrible as usual <laughs> loves hanging out with dirge found out that she apparently has a long lost sibling that attended hadil's uh, summer camp what's yeah. up with that <laughs> <laughs> you know so but other than that good cool and last but not least it's mommy hi chloe um, so I'm Chloe, uh, she, her, um, and I play Lyra, uh, Oath of the Agents Paladin, um, the current mother of this wonderful group of disaster pals, um, Thank keeping God. everyone safe, protect, attack, all that stuff, all that fun stuff. <laughs> awesome. Um, I'm really sorry if anyone's getting any background noise picking up from me. I don't know why my mic is extra sensitive today, but, um, let's get going. So the multiverse is an infinite place. All manner of planes and demiplanes exist in a cosmology known as the Great Wheel. 
Our tale is woven in the Outer Plains, a circle of 16 named plains which arc around a central hub known as the Outlands. And for today's journey, we're back in the city of Sigil. Now, for those that are new to us, aren't familiar with the Planescape setting, the city of Sigil is a donut-shaped construction. So, like, the hole in the middle goes around. And it hovers above the top of an impossibly tall spire that is right in the middle of the Outlands. Uh, our party have been given a residence, uh, the former kip of Dirge's uncle, Jisson. And it's a narrow building with few rooms, but they've managed to make the arrangements work for them somehow. It's been several months since the horrors of the Modron works, and a little while since Mega's coming of age ceremony. So you're setting into a daily life, sort of, in Sigil, and let's hear what you've been up to. Um, we'll start with Lyra, because you weren't with us last time. Lyra had a little um, mission to go do, a little errand to run. She left a letter, and now you're back. Tell yes. us what happened. Yeah, so uh, Lyra went um, to go do some research um, for herself and for her group. Um, so she went and did that. But on her way throughout Sigil, she decided to do some shopping and um, to bring about, um, when she came back, a few gifts for everyone. Um, so, uh, she, I'm imagining, like, as soon as she came through the door, back from her little, whatever, adventure, um, she has gifts just piled in her arms, and they're all very delicately wrapped, um, in craft paper and string, and she'd be like, hi, everyone, I'm back, and she'll, like, you know, come in and, and, um, kind of, like, set everything kind of with a huff down on the table, um, and uh, yeah, and she'll kind of hand out um, to everybody a little a package, basically for each of everybody. So she'll like place one all in. I don't know where everybody is, but she'll find you all. <laughs> a perfectly wrapped box is my favorite present. Thank you, Lyra. <laughs> well, it's it's what's in inside that. I think oh no, like I wouldn't mess it up. I wouldn't mess it up. Oh, um, well, I can, I can help you, and she'll start to, like, pull at the string. No! <laughs> Just, no, no, it's okay, it's okay, and she'll, like, help you open it a little bit, and, like, unravel the paper. Be like, look, it's, it's, it's really cool, it's, just check it out, really, you'll, I think you'll really like it. Is Mercy one of those uh, that, like, peels the sellotape really carefully and then folds the paper yeah. afterwards? Do you to make... reuse at yeah. some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and what's in the box? I'll open it. Okay, so when you open it, um, you see, I have it all written down, so. Ooh. so you see a fine pastel pink and green cloak, um, with white kind of ornate embroidery, uh, along the hem, and a silver triangular shaped clasp, um, Aww. and Lyra will be like, look, look, and she'll, like, take it out of the box and put it on you. She's like, I found it in a little shop. It's, it's a cloak of gleaming. And I think, I think you'll really like it. I think it, oh. I think it's perfect. And basically what it is, is it's a, it's a cloak that can never get dirty. Oh! <laughs> it can Mercy never get dirty. also screams. She's so excited. <laughs> yeah. 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 So like, yeah, she'll be like, it's perfect. I saw it and I, I just, you just had to have it. And I, I just, I had to, I had to get it just like, and she'll like straighten it out on your shoulders and stuff. And yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. Mercy has like a tear. She's so happy. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy you like it. And then she'll go and she'll hand um what else do I have on the list? <laughs> so um she'll go up to um to levity and she'll be like, I got I got you something too. And she'll hand that to her. Oh, I think you muted. <laughs> oh Sean, are you I muted? Oh she oh yeah, she gives you a hug and just kinda like Oh, thanks, and just opens it. Okay, perfect. Um, so when you open it, you see a small, slender, um, like, wooden pole um, with, like, it's like a mahogany wood with filigree decorated gold caps on either end, and uh, you recognize it as a pole of collapsing. Oh. Yeah. It so basically, it around. Yeah, so, like, yeah, you can, um, like, I don't know, if I can I can always send you these, like, out oh, yeah. there to all of the descriptions, but I'll read them out for anybody or everybody else, but um, so basically, while holding the template pole, you can use an action to speak a command, uh, a command word, and it collapses into a one-foot rod for easy portability, but it extends into a ten-foot rod. Yes. So Whoa. Wonderful. Yeah. And yeah. I have a surprise for you, too. <gasps> really? And... Really? 
<gasps> Levity like just kind of like does like a little like magic trick and just kind of opens her hand. There's a kind of a multicolored stone and she gives it to you. Oh, this is it's, so lovely. It's um Thank you. from the sensorium. It's I know you've been missing home, missing water deep, and <gasps> the stuff with Savras and and Saluna, I know it's tough. Mm -hmm. And what you do with that is you put a memory in there and it records oh. it and you can kind of take a happy moment and just put it in there, keep you Ooh. a little bit of home. Oh. Thank you. And she gives you a hug. Oh, she'll she'll like look at it and just give you like the biggest hug ever and just be like, thank you. I, I know exactly what I'm going to put in this. Thank, thank you so much. And she'll put it in her bag of holding. And um, yeah, she'll be like, I, I really hope you like your present and that you use it for something. You know, nice. I just figured we need a little something. We've been out here for so long. I think it's, you know. Yeah, she kind of just does like these fancy chores. Like, I love it. And she just kind of collapsed it and just like kind of puts it at her belt. Oh, it's like, perfect. Yeah. Awesome. You can see that like on her on Lyra's face, you can see that she just loves giving presents. Like she, this is like her her moment. Like she loves this. <laughs> um, so then she'll walk up uh, to Pentar next, um, and she'll be like, oh, "I got you this," and it's like a long wrapped package, and she'll like hand it to you. So I, I feel like you would have to like Pentar's like crawling out of the basement, and you walk up to the entrance of the basement, and she's just like. She yeah, grabs, she just like <laughs> grabs it, and she just starts gnawing on it. <laughs> does it like does the paper come off? I imagine like yeah, she gnaws like paper. a dog trying to open a present. <laughs> okay. just, that's that's what it would be, just like ripping the paper off, like in little pieces, doing a very horrible job, but trying her best. Okay, um, so when you r kind of rip it apart, um, you see that it's like a gnarled wooden staff with like vine like tendril patterns all over it and like it's like it's got mud on the bottom of it it's like very like it's interesting and and she, and Lyra will be like I found this in a in an odd store and I thought that you could use it it's it's called the staff of flowers but but you know I don't know I think it's perfect for you and and she and she says like when you hold it you can you can summon any flower you want and I know that you like to talk to them sometimes so when you're feeling you know anxious or upset so I thought this would be perfect for you. Oh. oh. Pintar doesn't know what to say. She's just like, <laughs> and she like hugs it really close and she just like spits into her hand and holds it out to shake your hand. She'll shake it and then pull her in for a hug. <laughs> yeah. she, she'll, she'll take it. She'll take it, but then she'll scramble back <laughs> down the stairs. Okay. Um, but as you scramble down the stairs, I'll be like, is Dirge down there too? <laughs> Yeah, when when she scrambles down, you're like, "Where have you been? This I can't kill this thing by my oh hello." <laughs> hey, I I have a gift for you, and she'll hand you a small paper package. You know that I don't really need material items, right? I don't. I think I think you'll really like this one, though. All right. Well, I hope I can eat it, and then she'll just open it. <laughs> so when you open it, you see like a small ocarina type instrument that's mm -hmm. made out of bone. Oh. And it's got like jagged carvings all over it. And nice. like, just like, it looks like it was just handmade and carved all like out of like nothing. Um, and she'll be like, um, I found this, it's, it's called an instrument of scribing. Oh. Um, yeah. So like when you play it, uh, you can use like your action or well, you can, you can expend one charge from it. So you have to charge it. Um, and she, and basically it writes a magical saying or phrase on anything that's a, like a non-magical surface so like walls i figured you could use it to like spread your word and she'll be like oh spread your word of the true death so. like you actually see her get like a little bit excited and she's like this is a, this is an excellent gift to the dustman faction when the true death claims you you will be remembered and then she just goes back downstairs <laughs> Lyra, Lyra nods like Ah, perfect. I, I, I'm happy you like it. And she'll like <laughs> yell down the stairs. And then um, she'll go up. Uh, I'm assuming, is Gil in, I guess, our room? I guess because we share a room, right, Gil? <laughs> yeah, Gil is in there, so good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so I imagine you've changed, they've changed everything. Absolutely. Everything. everything. Gil. <laughs> You will not recognize it. It's kind of a disaster. You okay. are rooming with like an 18 year old boy. So <laughs> perfect. So Lyra walks in, she kind of looks at everything. Oh, she just let me, let deep me inhale. <laughs> so 
you barely get the door open because the entire room is, first of all, filled with his dirty laundry. Second of all, filled with just reams and dozens of reams of silk, velvet, satin, all sorts of things. He has ordered a, a number of um, decorations for your and Miga's uh, parties. Mm -hmm. um, they are all embroidered with his face. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. God. Ooh. In fact, there's an there's an enormous like cheese sculpture in the very like corner of the room. <laughs> You're not a hundred percent sure how long it's been there, but it is him, like oh. in a heroic pose, and it's just got like a congratulations, <laughs> but it's kind of melted <laughs> because it's been there for a little while. Because he's not sure when these parties are supposed to be. Mm. He just wanted it. Oh, okay. That's awesome. And um, he like opens the door really wide and he's like, do you love it? Lyra will walk in, she'll look around, she'll be like, oh, did you make that? And she'll point to the sculpture. Did you make that yourself? No, of course not. Oh. Why would I waste time doing that? Because um, I had it. <laughs> I think that you are, I think it's very lovely. It's very lovely. It's Here, yours. I... I I'm so excited for it, and she'll like I, like pass it off, and she, <laughs> as she sees like all the embroidered faces like on the wall, and everything. She'll be like, um, here, this this is yours. I I got you this. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you can. And he'll you, like he'll like go over it in his mouth again. <laughs> as as she, as he's doing that, she'll be like, you can. It, yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he'll and he'll just like look at it and be, oh <laughs> and he'll like eh, and kind of like open it okay so when you open it you see this velvety cloak like you kind of pull it out and it's like reds and oranges with like gold <gasps> threads and beading all around it, it. perfect it. um and Lyra's gonna go okay now this is this is really cool. So she's gonna take it and she's gonna put it around him and clasp the little clasp and put like his little shoulders down and be like, okay, okay, almost ready. Now do this. And she'll like make a power pose and, and it'll start will. to, and it'll start to billow. It's a cloak of billowing. So, so, it'll start, <laughs> so it'll start to like billow and blow and like, be like, isn't that cool? It was the coolest thing I thought. I knew you had to have it. It just was perfect for you. He fucking loves it. Yeah, he'll, he like, for a moment, like his face gets like that, that school child giddiness to it. And then he'll, he'll like, look at you. This will do. Okay. I, I'm glad you, and Lyra like knows him enough where it's like, yeah, I did a good thing. This will do. He and he'll it. like shut the door, like slowly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Lyra's just like standing on the other side being like, he loves it. Yeah. It's like, this is my room, but okay. <laughs> okay, I've accepted this. Yeah. And then um, <laughs> Lyra's going to go find Miga. And then uh, I don't know where she would be. But... Miga is... I don't remember if we ever just, like established if Miga is, like, has been banished to the attic with all of her garbage. <laughs> Um, sure. but we'll just say that she, there is a small attic or, like, a Harry Potter door or closet that Gil has stuffed her into, um, <laughs> so she'll stay out of his room <laughs> and stop reading his diary, even though she can't read, um, and it's not a, a, a sad handwritten book, but anyway, we'll say that she has, like, a little cove under the stairs, and she's in there with all of her trash. Okay. Lyra will walk up and kind of knock at the door of the uh, little trash. Miga like flings it open. <laughs> Hi! Are you Hi. I do you like your little fort? I do. <laughs> this is my house. <gasps> it's a very lovely house. And she'll like look around and like look at all the garbage and stuff and be like, it probably could use some cleaning, but we're just, <laughs> yeah. we're just gonna These let it are go. my decorations. They're very lovely decorations, she'll say. And she'll be like, I got you a little gift. Oh. Is it for my you. birthday? I heard, yes, I, it is specifically, yes, yeah, so that I had to get everybody gifts because it wouldn't be fair not to just give everybody something, but I got you this little thing, and she hands you, like, this little package. Um, okay, Miga will, like, tuck it under her arm, and she, like, rifles through, like, a pile of trash 
Um, and well, it's not trash, but it's like mostly like stacks of like various letters that Gil was probably supposed to have sent, but Mika <laughs> took them to draw on them. <laughs> and um, she pulls one out of the stack, sending all of them flying, and holds out a picture and says, I thought you abandoned us, so I made you this. <laughs> Lyra will take and be like, I would never abandon you ever. I oh, and she'll like give her a hug and like look at the photo and just like oh. admire it and just like yes. hold it up and like um, yeah, I'll trip. So Migo will tear open her present with wild abandon um, <laughs> and keep every piece of nonsense that falls off, like little bits of paper. Like she'll tear it open, but as little bits of paper fall off, she'll like stoop down to like pick them up and like put them in various spots. Mm-hmm. Okay. And she'll be like, well, we'll, we'll find a nice spot for those later. But, but um, yeah, when you open it, you see a small oak wand um, with glittering red and teal patterns carved into it. Ooh. And it's a wand of pyrotechnics. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, no. It's oh, like no. that kind of when you buy a child a toy that makes yeah. noise. I can just hear everybody in that, like, the kip, like, stick their head out of their door. <laughs> she has like, a, oh, no. She has a tambourine this already. That's why She's you like did hers person. last, so we'd yeah. all be happy until... <laughs> I see what's going on. No. I so feel like I... Dirty and Pintar stick their heads like out of the basement, feeling a disturbance in the force. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, as Lyra hands you this wand, and as she sees your li- eyes light up, she's going to be like, now, this wand is very special, and it can only be used three times. It's got three charges, and you're only allowed to use those in emergencies. <laughs> in Death, when you're faced with dirge's true death, you use those emergency charges. <laughs> and she'll be like, I because if something happens, I want to be the one who helps you as soon as I can. I want to okay. be there. So you use those <laughs> for emergencies. Oh, and she's like very like specific about emergencies only. <laughs> like, Mia looks at the one and is like, it's now an emergency. No, now is not an emergency. Yes, and she'll be like, "But you keep it on you in your in your bag of holding," and she'll kind of take it and put okay. it in your bag of holding and be like, "Only in emergencies, but it's very special and okay. it's very very cool." <laughs> so now is not an emergency. Not an emergency. No. Okay. No. <laughs> I will wait for an emergency. <laughs> Perfect, yeah, and she'll like be. be very happy about that. And she'll be like, good, good. Only in emergencies. I'm happy. And, and she'll be like, it's all clear to like Dirge and Pentar and like everybody's sticking their heads out of the door. They've like, already like okay. like made and made like a sandbag like bunker. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and like in this time, ever since like you you left the basement, this awful smell is wafting up from the basement, and it's because oh. she's used the staff of flowers to just manifest a giant corpse flower at the top of it. Oh oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. She's just like, why? Yay. Why? <laughs> oh, that's the best. Yes. I figured that would. Leo would be like, I figured that would. You know what? These gifts are all going to be great. They're going to be great. They're going to be helpful. <laughs> this is not bite me in my tail anytime soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so you get all the gifts out, and then there is a scratching at the door. Mika whips out the wand. Is this an emergency? <laughs> no, 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 not an emergency, not an emergency. And she'll walk up to the door being like mom arming Mika, being like, no, 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 hold on. And, and she'll like open the door. So when you look out, there's no one there. But when you look okay. down, there is a cat just sitting there. And then she goes, mm, you're going to have me stand here all day, you burk. I mean, I only gave you my kip after all. Oh, um, well, that's a lovely hello. Um, come on in. It's it's fine. I mean, you were only there for a second, and <laughs> she'll, like, screw them in. <laughs> and the cat pads in, and it says, mm, is, is my niece here? Um, yeah, yeah, one, one second, I'll get her, and I'll walk up to the basement door and knock, and be like, Dirge! Company! <laughs> Miga looks, oh, sorry. Does they're not, not like... dead yet. What, what? 
<laughs> there you have a guest um if oh you just, yep i is that my uncle he can come he can okay and she'll just crawl out what your uncle your uncle's here to visit you yes. be nice be nice i'm just checking up on my niece see how you're settling into the place i mean it's not on fire so i guess that's probably a bonus for you hmm. and it sort of looks around it's like made some changes in your friends i mean they seem yes i mean if, if, when she says friends she's like <laughs> <laughs> uh mostly he says well it's not the only reason i'm here what's no. gotten around uh, apparently you're good at dealing with the modrons Oh, that's not me. That would be my friends. You can talk to them. I'm not good at dealing with anything except for telling people to die. I'm sure you do very well at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good petitioner. <laughs> he sort of, like, turns and sits and starts licking a paw and looking at you, Lyra. Lyra would be like, would, would you like some milk? <laughs> and, like... Or a drink. I like laughing like he would like some milk. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe, maybe some water. Actually, there's there's a problem in my home plane. See. Oh, oh, what what problem is that? And she'll like scurry off and kind of like get her water flask and like pour it in a bowl and like set it down. In the kitty cat plane. <laughs> he laps it up very thirstily and then sits back down and says to you. He says, mm, the river in in the Beastlands, that's where I'm a petitioner. It's poisoned by the Modrons at the moment. And they're marching through it. And then he sort of like cocks his head round at um, Mega and says, mm, your, your parents live in the next plane that the river flows into, don't they? Mia has no sense of direction, but she'll say yes. <laughs> he says, um, he sort of like brushes his ear, licks his paw. He sort of like gets distracted and cleans himself every so often, and then he's like, "Yes, the Modrons are marching up the river, and it's poisoning the beastlands and other plains." Lyra will kind of be like, "Well, oh, that that's terrible!" Like. How oh and like she'll kind of like think, do you, do you need help like should we and she'll look kind of at Mercy and she's like should we <laughs> like yeah and she'll like try to figure that out um what exactly do you need from us we have dealt with the Modrons a few times and Mercy's mind kind of flashes back to that like, torture factory we were in, and she shivers a little bit. Uh, he says, um, the Sealy Court have sent me. Um, uh, they say the Modrons have gone off course and are marching up the river and polluting it, and perhaps you could convince them to take the right course. Go back to their path. They're off course? Yes. Uh, mm. Mercy's sense of order, like she twitches a little bit when he says that. Uh, this seems like in a mer. She pauses, <laughs> not in emergency, <laughs> but oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> a bad thing that needs to be dealt with. Not in emergency, Mika. Mika does like that that thing that like Ghibli characters do, where they like prickle their entire body, and she like. Watches the one or a little thinking. <laughs> um, but like kind of her shoulders droop a little bit when she hears it's maybe not an emergency. But it could be, so you know, she'll just hold the wand a little tighter just in case an emergency happens within the next three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, with Thaumaturgy, Mercy just starts make like making like bell sounds all around the house, kind of gathering people to order, uh, because 
these modrons need to be readjusted so they are on the proper path. Hmm. Pintar crawls hmm. up from the basement <laughs> and she's, she's just like, what? What's going on? I wasn't done down there. Yeah, get back here. They're not dead yet. I mean, yeah. are you leaving? Lyra okay. gives you a very scared look. Like I, tie, it's, I tied them up for the time being, so it's fine. Tied them up? What? <laughs> so right. like... I'll climb out of the basement and like lock the door. Like with Miga five looks different at locks. yeah, five uh, different locks. <laughs> yeah. Miga, Miga looks at Pentar and Dorage and goes, <laughs> "Wait, what?" <laughs> It's not, an emergency. An emergency. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not an emergency. It's not Are an emergency. It's not an evil party and like nobody told me. No. <laughs> <laughs> like y'all were just like, yeah, make a lawful good character. Yeah. And then just like, okay. Yeah, look at me just like popping. Well, no one's been the in the basement, so <laughs> yeah, just don't go in the basement. I just imagine like Lyra walking towards the basement as like just as you start locking all the doors yeah, and she gives you yeah. this look like I will go down there. Uh, if, if she walks, if she walks over, Pentar snap takes the key from Dirge and swallows it. <laughs> <laughs> and Dirge is like, "Well, I'm not gonna be getting that for a while." <laughs> Lyra just like watches Pentar walk away, just slack jawed in awe, <laughs> just being like, "Oh my god! Oh no!" <laughs> like, yeah, you just, just like... pass by Levy, and she just goes like. Just leave it alone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> stay it's not there. worth it. <laughs> it's not worth the effort. Oh. Jason sort of narrows his eyes at you, Pentar, and he says, mm, "That corpse flower isn't covering up, covering up the smell of what you're doing, you know." M maybe to you. <laughs> he Cat. sort of like turns and wags his tail, <laughs> and then he's like. Mm, I've been given her portal key and a portal to use. Follow me. We shall follow. Yeah, we follow. Has Gil come out of the room? His room? <laughs> Just oh. leave him. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like oh. up there staring at himself in the mirror or something. Right, I'll, go and, like... I'll go and get him, but Gil, we have to leave and then... She notices his clothes like, oh my god. She looks at her clothes like, oh no. Let's go. It's bad, too. It's like if you could have a Star Wars or Star Trek collection with, like, the cutouts, but it's all of you. Um, and he'll, he's like, they're gifts. And, like, when Levity does come into the room, he's, like, in the middle of pinning himself into, like, a silk outfit just to try and, like, get his measurements. He's like, What? I assume she tells him everything and he puts his regular stuff on, but that's what she sees when she walks in. Oh <laughs> Time to go. Fine. Now. Can I say that um, Miga was following Levity because she wants to see her emergency stick and sees the enormous, like, cheese sculpture in the corner? Absolutely. Is there a way, <laughs> Is there a way that she can, like, try and past both of them and take like a handful of cheese. Ew. Um, <laughs> oh, no, I, oh. I, I would say, you know what, he won't even try and stop you. He's like not, he's very different from how Gil is. And he's very much like, yeah, come in. Alright. So gonna... that's entirely up to you whether or not you want to taste this several week old statue. I do want to taste the cheese. Absolutely. I want to taste all right. Yeah. I'm going to oh, eat cheese. You're going to eat cheese. Sorry, I was muted. Go You're going to eat cheese. Roll a Z20. Levity's not going to stop. She's seen me <laughs> eat so many things. Which so part of the statue the do way. you take the cheese from? Um, We'll say, like, mm, just, like, the front. So maybe, like, the nose area. Okay, well, it's, it's like, human-sized. So. Oh. Like, well, Miga's, like, maybe, anything. maybe just under five feet. Well, maybe, like... 11 okay. so maybe yeah, she's she just six, like three so she could probably yeah just like grab like she just reaches something like takes a chunk out just, like, um jump. <laughs> yeah just like whoosh um what modifier am i using no modifier uh, no modifier uh, i rolled an oh. 18 18 um yeah. you suddenly get teleported to another plane oh dear <laughs> is this like is oh her, her pintors like was her fungus growing on this is that what's happening? <laughs> oh no! What just happened? <laughs> oh no! Gil, what? Gil, 
This is an emergency, I Mika. Do. I know you can't hear us. But <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Bill will immediately look at Levity and just like, whoops. You have to get her back. Oh, what? I... It's your cheese sculpture. What? Yeah. What? Seven minutes later, Mika reappears after having spent seven minutes in limbo. Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no. Oh, the, oh, the charges are gone! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely every single charge in that wand is gone. <laughs> oh, no. oh, no! And, like, okay. I imagine, like, Mika has, like, little bits of, like, hair that are burnt, and there's, like, a tiny little flame at the end of, like, a curl. <laughs> she just are, are, looks at the group and she's you, like, are you, are I you... had an emergency. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. And he'll just, like, look at her like, oh. And then he'll, like, give an enormous belt and it's a huge, like, multicolored bubble. And he's, oh. Are you, are you okay to go, Mika? Let's go. Okay? Let's go. We no, Mika's go now. now completely distracted by the bubble. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Levy just looks at Pentar and just says, "Do you like smelly things? Do you want to take this thing downstairs? It smells awful." Yeah, well, I can't right now because I, <laughs> we locked the door. But I'll take it when we get back. Good. It'll well, be even Mika's smellier. It's Mika's gift. It's Mika's birthday what present. Mika doesn't like that birthday present. <laughs> Mika used up all her pretty wine. <laughs> Mika had an emergency. Oh. So you manage to all gather together and follow Jison to the portal after all this shenanigans. And once you step through the portal, again you shake off the shiver and you look at the savannah that spreads around you. The noonday sun shines down through the waving leaves and on this dappled ground tall grasses are swaying in the breeze. The air is crisp and fresh here. In fact, you've never smelled cleaner, sweeter air. And it's filled with the sound of crickets in summertime. Far off in the distance stretch out the branches of the most enormous tree you've ever seen. And this tree, you think it must go all the way up to the sky and beyond. Um, oh, Kayla's gone. I was going to ask Pentar to do something, but I'll do that in a minute. So, what do you do once you arrive? Hmm. Lyra's gonna take a really deep breath and she's gonna stand there and kind of look and listen and take in what is around her and you kind of can see a tear run down her face and she quickly wipes it away and she says this <clears throat> this place is is quite lovely don't you think that's well, wonderful Me yeah. Mika like kind of scoots up to uh Lyra and like notices, doesn't say anything, but like holds out the now used wand and goes, Are you having an emergency? <laughs> oh. She'll like look down at the wand and look at it and be like, How did you but I just Oh, well, no, I, I think I I'm not really it's okay. It's fine. And she'll kind of put the wand back into her hand and be like, Are you gonna keep are you gonna keep this still? Yes, this is my new treasure. And she'll like kind of nod, pat her on the head, and walk forward. Um, Mercy is feeling like really courageous, knowing that her cloak can't get dirty, and uh, <laughs> wants to do something crazy. So, if we're standing on a path, she will now stand uh, right next to the path instead. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Insane. Um, yeah. Penta. Wild. Kayla. Yeah, sorry, I was unmuting. That's okay. Um, so you've all just arrived on the Beastlands. You're in a savannah. The noonday sun's beating down. Tell me what you, <sighs> Druid Pentar, sees creature-wise around you. Uh, I see just this horrible deathscape that I don't like because it's really hot and gross. Um, I don't know. So it's just a desert scape. Mm. Savannah, so there's forests. Savannah? There's grasses. Oh, okay, I thought you meant like a desert. Okay, no. um... I don't know. Would there be lions and stuff in the savannah? Is that... Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Yeah. There's a lot of lions and gazelle and... That bird from the Lion King. <laughs> yeah. Hornbill? 
<clears throat> yes, thank you. Yeah, this um, I believe his name is Zazu. Oh. Yeah, um, <laughs> Zazu Bird. <laughs> so yeah, you can see all these um, different creatures roaming around or flying around. And Jissum is just, the grasses are sort of up to your shoulders, so Jissum is almost invisible down the down in the, uh, around your feet. But he's I'll just sort of to like, look at him and be like, hey, if you want to climb on me, like, so you don't, you know get eaten here. You can, like, ride on my back. He says, mm, yes. Do you know where we're going, though? No, but, I mean, you can point your little paw. No good point. Point. Get it? Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Mirror claps. <laughs> he jumps up and sits on your shoulder and indicates a direction. Okay. All right, I will walk in whatever direction he wants me to go. And everyone else is with you? Mm-hmm. Is uh, Mega tall enough to be over the grass? Mm, just about, probably. Probably have to jump every so often to get your bearings. All right, yeah, you just see, like, a mess of, like, the top of here slightly above the grass. And so, Jason, sitting on Dirty's shoulder, points the way. And eventually you come to this small grove and the trees are growing thicker here. The air is cooler and damper and dewdrops on the leaves sparkle in the dimmer light under this canopy. There are small flowers and bright spotted toadstools peeking out among the tree roots. And you can see flitting around the trees are some small fairies. Mm. It's quite magical. Oh man. Okay, so Pentar's definitely down in the grass, like trying to hunt one of those fairies, trying to eat it. Just eat it, basically. Oh no. <laughs> A fairy sort of flies up to you and sort of hands on its hips, and um, he says, "What are you trying to do there?" Can she try to like snatch him out of the air and eat him? You can try. <laughs> what uh, do mate, I need to do? Do a dexterity check for me. Okay. Nineteen. Oof. So you grab hold of him, and he's like, Ah, ah, Fiona, help, help! And another fairy flies up, and she's like, Tristan, Tristan, what's Ugh. happening? Oh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> No. She wants to. She wants to eat him. Mercy's gonna walk over. It's <laughs> <laughs> just like <laughs> she's like just got like, him. Yes, do it. Yeah. No, no, no. Mercy's on like. Power. They're just like the devil on Pentar's shoulder, and Mercy's gonna come over. I mean, the angel would be like Pentar. Damn, Pentar, let him go. Let him go. <laughs> She she just like starts to gnaw on his shoulder. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, like TK actually kind of wants to see, <laughs> wants to see <laughs> Kayla go through with making. <laughs> they are magical creatures. He's so mad. Like, seeing this one is probably a little scarred. <laughs> I guess maybe like levity teeth is like just like just covers her eyes. Like don't, nope. nope. She, well, like, waves the ro- wand around trying to get it to, like, make more fire. She's like, it's an emergency! It is, it is, it is, it is. <laughs> well, he, ta- he tastes really bad, and she's like, eh, and just throws him on the ground. He's, a li- he's lying on the ground, his wings are crumpled, and he can't fly now, and he's clutching his shoulder. And he's just like, oh, Fianna, I am undone! <laughs> We're really sorry is about dead? this, Tristan. Oh, no. Is he dying? Fianna says, it's okay, we can we can get him healed, but uh, we do need some help. Alright, I drop a pamphlet on him. <laughs> <laughs> just, just covers him up completely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, just God. in case you die. And um, Jisun is like, mm, we're supposed to be helping these people. You don't want to make an enemy of the Seely Fae. Number one, you're not my mom. Number two, okay, fine. Mm, your mom. Oh I remember her. Let's say, whoops, and I'll just pick the pamphlet back up. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the fairies can explain again about 
the Modrons deviating from their expected course and that they need to be persuaded to return. They must have deviated for a reason. And they can point you in the direction and sort of say that this is where the Modrons have deviated from their path if you head that way and find out what's stopping them. All right. I mean, I guess we go in that direction. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, as we're going along, um... I also would like to find a large leaf as a parasol because I am am easily burned in this sunlight. <laughs> oh yeah, the Fae probably could grant you a leaf to use as a parasol or a large toadstool. Perfect. Yeah, yeah just a giant mushroom. Them. <laughs> yeah. I'll just use a giant mushroom as an umbrella. Is Jison still sitting on your shoulder this whole time? Oh, yeah, if he wants to, then yeah, he can sit on my shoulder. Okay. And he's or just... he can go on top of the mushroom, whatever. <laughs> he just sort of like skitters around the top of the mushroom and lies down and naps on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Okay. So as you're sort of heading along, tell me your sort of like your marching order and what's going on and... Uh, Mercy well, says, shall we go by height or alphabetically this time? <laughs> Mira will be like, what, whatever you think is best. And, but I think Dirge should go first because she's kind of directing. She'll like, point. Yeah, I'm doing my best. <laughs> Alphabetical it is. <laughs> Amigurus, um, is three foreign with you? Um, he can walk alongside the front dirge. Uh, yeah, I just assumed he would be with Mega. I usually do, so. But he's sort of, like, along with you, and he's like, you keep sort of losing him in among the grasses. Oh, no. Oh. Um, Mega will, like, go to the front and, like, pick him up. But again, so it's just, like, it looks like putting on uh, you keep cutting out. I don't know oh, what's no. up your mic then. But yeah, he can sit on your shoulders and he will hold his little fork hand and point in the direction you need to go so you don't have to jump up and down as much. Yay. Yay. So, as you head along, you see there's all sorts of creatures here uh, wandering around. Like Penta said, there were lions... You can see some rhino off in the distance, gazelles jumping above the grasses. Um, and then suddenly there's a crunch. A crunch. A crunch. Pentar. Yes. Dirge, <laughs> you have brought or attempted to bring the true death to a scorpion under your foot. <laughs> uh, unfortunately... <laughs> As you look down, you realise the scorpion's not as small as you would like it to be. Oh no! <laughs> and can everyone Gross. roll some initiative? Okay. Oh. oh! Here we go. Oh, Pentar, eat it. Yeah, this kind of feels like <laughs> a <Dirge's> problem. 19? <laughs> oh, I, got a, I got a 19 as well. Oh, one second. <clears throat> So, uh, Dirge, what did you get? I also got a 19. 19. Gil? Yeah. Gil got a 5. He's too enamored with the purple trees right now. <laughs> <laughs> Levity? Levity got an 8. She's too busy trying to figure out where Pentar went to figure out where this crunch came from. <laughs> Lyra? Um, I got a 3. <laughs> so... Yeah, I guess I, Lear, Lear's too enamored by everything as well. <laughs> Mercy a 19, did you say? Oh no, I oh, got sorry. a 12. Mika? 19. And yeah. Pentar was a 19, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Um, Mika, Pentar, and Dirge, uh, what order do you want to go in? I can go last. That's fine with me. Yeah, I'm, I'll go first since I stepped on the screen first. Okay, Amiga will go second then. Obviously, that's the only place she can go. <laughs> <laughs> so, the order is going to be um, Dirge, Amiga, 
Penta. Then something might happen. Oh boy. Uh, we'll put that there. Then Mercy. Then Levity. Then the Giant Scorpion. Gil, mm. Lyra, S34N. Okay. So, Dirge. <coughs> what do you want to do um, to this gigantic scorpion you've trod on the, the tail of? Oh, God, gross. Uh, can I go ahead and cast my Cloud of Daggers? On yourself, yeah? Yeah, on myself, yeah. So That's the scorpion is enveloped in it as well as you are yes. jumping on it. Okay, he sure is. thing. And uh, that's going to do 44 piercing damage. Or slashing damage, I'm sorry. 44 slashing damage. Is it a save when it um, gets to its turn? Um, let's see. I think it's just, it says, uh, when it enters the spell's areas for the first time on a turn, or if it starts its turn there. Okay, we'll roll that damage when we get to the scorpion's turn, yeah? Yes. Yeah. I've written daggers down. Okay, cool. Yay. So all these sharp bones start whirling around. <laughs> Stabby. Mega. Oh no. Yay. Um. Mega wants attack. Attack. Uh, yeah, she'll do sneak attack on big scorpion boy. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. Forget is does with sneak attack do I add stealth to it? Uh, no, no, it's just an attack roll with your dagger. Then you add, okay. you can add sneak attack because dirge is next to it. Okay, so that's gonna be a fi fifteen. Fifteen. Um, yeah. Just makes it. You find a little space between its chitinous hide and shove your little dagger in. All right, and then I do. Yeah, your dagger plus its bonus plus sneak attack. Okay, so dagger is 1d4 plus 3. Alright, so I'll roll that first. Okay, so... Try that again. I got... 2 plus 3, so 5, and then my 2d6. 7... 13. Cool. And then I will use my bonus action to uh, hide in the long grass. Okay, no problem. Uh, Pintar. Alright, Pintar is going to cast Chill Touch on the scorpion. Okay. And that was a 9 to hit, so probably mm -hmm. not. No luck, I'm she afraid. Mm -hmm. Um, suddenly you hear a trumpeting noise. <sighs> and a large elephant and a smaller elephant come charging up to you. What? Through the grass. They're here to help. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, they have seen you and they consider you to be quite threatening. No, that's okay. They can't see me. I'm hiding. They can't see you. <laughs> but one of them... Oh. Let's have a look. Oh, okay. So, the larger elephant heads... Who's the tallest? Gil, Isn't it Gil? <laughs> yeah, I think it's Gil. Yeah. Totally Gil. Yeah, this... That sound is the sound of us throwing Gil under the bus. We're <laughs> <laughs> throwing Gil under the elephant. What is... <laughs> Definitely an elephant. This large creature starts um, charging for you, Gil. But you can discern Grey, thankfully, at the moment. So you manage to dart out of the way as it comes charging up to you. And who's next tallest? God. Uh, Lyra's. Lyra, maybe. 5'7? I'm 5'8. I'm 5'8, okay. but I hunch. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think I'm 5'2, I'm pretty small That makes Mercy's life hell, I'm sure, the hunch 
Um, yeah, Lyra, <laughs> uh, a small elephant charges up towards you, but again, you duck out of the way as you see it coming. Okay. I scream because I've probably never seen an elephant before in my life. Yeah, they're looking <laughs> pretty angry. Mercy. Um, so I'm seeing these horrifying tentacle nose monsters <laughs> rushing at my friends. Yeah. Um, so Mercy is going to twin cast levitate on both of them. And I need a con saves, I do believe. Uh, DC 15. <laughs> so you're all horrified, shocked, awed. I don't know what emotion you would ever would like to pick. As these two huge grey tentacle-faced creatures suddenly rise up into the air. Yeah, and I'm just going to hold them at 20 feet there. Okay. <laughs> Gil loves it. His mother's from Cholt and he's from Kalimshan, so he's just oh, it's like the surf. It's like the circus. <laughs> the rest of us are like freaking out. <laughs> he just thinks they're time. whales for some reason. Anything big and grey is a whale. Okay. Um, Levity. Um, Levity just looks at um, Mercy and just says can I, can I hit them? Um, yeah. I'm, if you can get uh, a hit up there, go for it. Yeah, okay, so she um, uses her new staff to kind of like like a pull button and mm -hmm. just gonna try, she's not gonna mm -hmm. actually try and do damage, she just wants enough momentum to like push them as far as like as far as they can go. Okay, yeah, um, roll an attack roll. Alright. That is a 15. Okay, yeah, that's enough for you to push one of the elephants. Uh, where are you mm -hmm. pushing it? Just in a direction that's further away from us. Okay, so you sort of like get your pole, jam it in the ground, up you go, and yeah, you push it away from the group. And then it's probably um, like rolling and floating <laughs> away. I... <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to use the remainder of my 40 feet of movement to. It's, can I do it again to the other one? Yeah. Oh, you said I can yeah. Yes. All right. That, ooh, okay, that is a 25. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yep. So just, yeah, just push them kind of in a similar direction, just, like, away from us. Um, roll me a d6. Alright. One. Okay. So they sort of bump into each other and there's some slight bruising. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. no. <laughs> really, Vince. And they're like, <laughs> as it happens. These creatures are horrifying. <laughs> um... You're standing on its tail, Dirge, so it can't do anything apart from try and bite, uh, snap at you with its claws. But roll your dagger damage okay. first. I got 11. Oh, nice. And Ew. It's going to try and make two attacks with its claws on you. Go away. Um, and both of them are going to hit. So you're going to take 12 bludgeoning damage. Oh, God. Can you make... Oh no, you are grappled. Eat it. You are grappled by one of its claws. Oh god, gross. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, it's, it. it's guilt. It's guilt. <laughs> what was that? If, um, th it's guilt's turn now. But you're, yeah, you're oh, grappled. Okay, so I'm just grappled. Yeah. Cool. It does, well, it will take dagger damage again. Yeah, but the dagger damage you're done, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um... <laughs> Gil is having a delightful time, everyone. Uh, everything is purple, um, with slight hints of gold. He's he's having a good bubbly time. Um, and since the the elephants have been cast up out of his way, he'll uh, he'll go ahead and he'll like, oh, bravo! And uh, he he's like really into like this show and casts. Um, less on mercy dirge and levity for giving him oh. such a good show right now <laughs> he thinks it's amazing um oh yeah when you make an attack roll or a saving throw uh before the spell ends you can roll an extra d4 Rad. and Sorry. that's mm -hmm. a concentration spell isn't it are, are um it doesn't say concentration, mm -hmm. but 
No, nah, bless is a yeah. concentration spell, yeah. Is it? And levitate's okay, concentration yeah. as well, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. I just want to note down. So then it's Lyra's turn, if that's everything for Gil, yeah? Um, yeah, I mean, Gil's just kind of, like, hanging out. He has he has brought out his shield and, and scimitar, but other than that, like, he's kind of just hanging out. Are the three people from Faroon the only one that no one elfin is and are not horrified by this giant, like, <laughs> elf creature? <laughs> I mean, Dirk probably just thinks it's a demon. Like, wow, that's from the hells. It's got, like, <laughs> horns and tentacles. Granted, most of us have horns. So yeah, we should be a little more enlightened. Is, they're like teeth. She doesn't though. know what it is. She just assumes that it's big and gray. That it's yeah. For some yeah. reason. Horned whale. On dry land. Yeah, whale. on dry land. <laughs> yeah, Gil's family definitely took him to like the circus, and he's like ridden them like a thousand times. He's ridden them in parades, and he's just thinks, "Oh yes, this is fantastic." Of course he would. Of course. <laughs> um. Yeah, Lyra. Um, okay, so am I close to the scorpion, or, like... You can be. Uh-huh. Yes? Okay, I'm gonna move towards the scorpion, because I'm gonna see it Just under... keep out of uh, Dirgy's daggery cloud. Yes. I will. I will do my best, and I'll, I, uh, I'll wind up with my glaive, and I'll try to take a stab at it. Okay, sure. Okay. So, I rolled a dirty 20. Nice, yeah, that hits damage. Yeah. All right, so one d ten. Let me get my. I got new dice for this. This is the first time I'm rolling with these. So, oh boy. All right, so that's ten. So that's four. Okay. Four damage. Four slashing damage. Excellent. Um. It's S three four in sees all this. Sees Mega stabbing. And tries to do a little stab of his own as well. Shoves his fork at the scorpion. And it just sort of goes dunk and bounces off of the uh, plate. <laughs> uh, Miga like, gives him like a little like friendly pat on top of his little head and goes, You'll get next time. He sort of nods at you. Actually, can everyone make a constitution saving throw as well? Okay. There we go. Okay. I think... Are always good. Always good. <sighs> Oof. Nineteen. Okay, Seventeen. Mercy, Mercy, you're fine. Mega, you're fine. I got a oh, dirty good. twenty. Uh, Pentar is fine. I got a four. Dirge, your hands suddenly turn into little rat paws. What? Oh, okay. I mean, uh, I'm just what? like. Rats of oh. water, do you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> levity. I levity got an eight. Um, did you add your bless levity? Uh, I don't know. If Twelve would maybe be the eleven. Number. I don't know. Oh. Uh, levity, your tiefling tail suddenly becomes striped. Ooh. <sighs> uh, Gil. Rad. Oh boy. That's an eight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gil, you suddenly, this fine, soft, sleek fur grows all over your body. <laughs> Lyra, what color is it? What color does Gil see it as? Um, well, it's a sort of, um, what was the animal you told me? <laughs> Basically. Uh, like a sort of tabby-ish, isn't it? Yes, Abyssinian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Gil loves it. <laughs> He's just like touching himself. He's like, yes. Yeah. Nira? I rolled a six. Okay. So, um, you suddenly start sprouting feathers. Oh, oh. And <laughs> she's like feeling her face. She's like, oh, oh, oh no. And <laughs> she's like starting to like kind of like panic <laughs> and look at everyone else. Being like, do you see this? Is this? Oh, <laughs> what is going on? Mega, you look at S three four N, and he has little cat ears. <gasps> oh, oh, that's cute. Oh, so Mega loves this. <laughs> Mega adores uh, K four four seven now. Uh, loves K four seven, and but she sees 
Lyra kind of like panicking and starts like pulling like pulling her wand out and goes, Oh, it's an emergency and starts like <laughs> waving it around even though it's not gonna work anymore. <laughs> it starts like waving it around with like like knocking grass over and <laughs> Lyra will be like, it's okay, it's it's okay, Miga. It's just, do you see these? This is unusual. That's not an emergency. It's just unusual. <laughs> She's like trying to like figure out the feathers, like on the leg. Jason sniffs you, Dirge, and he says, "Hmm, you smell good." Oh, oh body um, steps away. <laughs> creepy. And he looks creepy. around <laughs> at the he looks around at the rest of you, and he's like, mm, "I guess the plane is starting to get to you all." What do you mean, get to us? She, yeah, like, explain yourself. Explain, is this ma- What is this? If you spend too long here, you start to become one of us. Oh, cool, great. How yeah, Dirge, Jason, Jason just said that you smelled delicious. Oh. <laughs> and it's your turn as well. Oh, no. Oh, great. Um, okay. Is the scorpion still alive? It is, yes. Okay. It's looking bad. Good. I am glad it's looking bad. Oh, uh, well, I will do... I'll do dissident... Well, it's not intelligent enough to do dissident whispers. My bad. Um. Whatever, I'm just gonna hit it, and then just wait for my cloud daggers to stab it again. Okay. So I'm, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna poke it with my, my bone... My sharp bone that I use as a dagger. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna poke it with your bone, are you? Yeah, yep. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> do. Can you can you please stop dragging my show down to your birdcage level? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We... <laughs> oh my god. Um. Okay. So yeah, I don't think I get any bonus to hit. Do I? I don't think I do. Dex strength. Um, no, I, I didn't roll. Oh, I think yes, with less you do roll. get for your attack roll. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, attack roll, you get a d4. Oh, sweet, okay. Yeah. Plus you proficient. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. That's my All bad. Right, so... Uh, so that's a 12. On the scorpion? Yeah. Uh, you hit. Yeah, you can't muster up enough balls to get through this plate. Okay, on the I'm scorpion. like, ow. Just like daggers. Please. Please. <laughs> Mika. Yay. Um, has me Mia, Mia hasn't like sprouted any like weird No, you saved, you're fine. Okay. That's right. Alright. Um I'm gonna sneak attack on this because I'm assuming the scorpion is uh yeah, because you're hidden, Still you can alive. have advantage on your attack roll. Yay! Uh, alright, so I would go ahead and roll dick. Yeah. Okay, so 16? Yeah. Yay! Um, and I'll do my d4 first. Okay, so 4, and then my 3d6. 4... Seven, nine, ten. So all together ten, yeah? Yeah, and then I will uh, hide again after. Okay, excellent. Pintar. Pintar is just like looking around at everybody like, she's she's very confused she didn't know everyone else could wild shape and that they could do such a <laughs> shitty job at it like <laughs> oh <laughs> wow <laughs> plus there's these so, gray tentacle face monsters in the air and yeah everyone's does stabbing an insect <laughs> yeah she does remember that uh dirge told her to eat things so she wild shapes into a giant centipede mm -hmm. and wants to crunch um, Grunch. the scorpion, <laughs> giant centipede, yeah. giant scorpion, Godzilla dog. So let's see. It's nature. This is. It's like. Crunch. Crunch. Uh, that is a fifteen to hit. Just hits. Woo! I want to crunch. All right. Um, Gil loves this too. Terrible, terrible <laughs> nature. A titan against happy. the titan. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So that's four piercing damage plus nine poison damage. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. How do you I, I, crunch this scorpion, <laughs> Penta? Um, I want to... I don't know. Do scorpions have heads? I always want to go for the yeah. head. They got... I haven't actually looked at a piece. scorpion in a while. They got, so like, a front piece. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I want to rip his... I want to rip his butt off. So I'll just, yeah. like... I'll yeah, just crunch like, that butt. Yeah, I'll crunch, crunch that butt. butt. <laughs> and grab onto his tail and just rip it off and start flinging it around. Give it to Miga, she'll love it. Yes. Yeah. Like oh, oh, yeah, no. I fling it around a while and then I, like, skitter over to Miga and drop it in front of her like a dog. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh. Miga picks it up and, like, holds it triumphantly in the air like he... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's just, like, dripping with poison. Yes. Does that count as a flail? Is it a flail weapon now? For Miga? <laughs> Ooh, it's can can Miga put it on the end of her hand? <laughs> <laughs> so there's like big scorpion tail with a barb dripping with poison hanging off of this wand. Yes. Oh, this is, oh my. Um, Mira frowns disapproving. <laughs> you we gave her a needle. Off. We gave the child a needle. Bill says all of that out loud too. He's like, can we do it? <laughs> you know what? Oh, please. please. Oh. I'm going to let you have a, that as a flail. With poison damage, one d six poison. Yes. Oh, I'm too blessed. You've oh now given the child poisoned flail. Yes. Not the one. Like, yes. 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 Oh yes, no. Yes. Oh boy. More oh, death. Boy. More destruction. Dirge is like, thank you for eating that gross scorpion. She, <laughs> she waves her little arms. Good job, acolyte. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so um, the elephants can't do anything because they're still floating in the air. Yeah, Mercy is planning on keeping their, them up there for the full 10 minutes. Either letting Levity continue to push them away or just jiggling them up and down. <laughs> yeah, Levity, Levity can run really fast, so like she'll just push them and then she'll run back to the group eventually. And okay. We'll hopefully run away. So, well, I'll face them away from from us. There's no point yeah. going through all the rounds of combat if no one's going to hit the elephant and you're just going to push <laughs> them away. <laughs> so I'm just going to say that you push them far enough away so they're not going to trouble you anymore. And when Mercy finally lets them down, they, they trample off, going, <laughs> Very confused. Very confused. Very <laughs> upset. Very scared. <laughs> and you're able to continue Jisson wakes up from his toadstool bed and he says mm, why have we stopped you didn't tell us we would turn into beasts mm, yes but I said that I explained why it's happened <sighs> are you still fighting are we done let's hurry up before the rest of us turn into animals <laughs> So you continue, um, you sort of see where the march is, and it's going along, and it's still pretty big, uh, there's still hundreds upon thousands of Modrons, um, it's maybe a little smaller than when you saw it when you were escorting it, it's lost one or two, mm -hmm. um, but it's still a pretty big march, and you can see it marching along, and there's sort of like people that are tagging along with it now, like, not escorts like you were, but people that are like, um... It's like one man pushing a little wheelbarrow cart and other people with backpacks. Like, they're just following the march along. But you can see where it diverts. And just it, just before oh, this large tree, not the one you saw when you came in. This is just a, a different tree. Um, it just turns and you can see the tree is surrounded by a shimmering force field. And as you get closer to it and look up, you can just about see buildings clustered around the trunk like beehives. And there are figures with wings flitting about. And a figure, one of these figures spots you and flies down. And as it approaches, you can see it's a beautiful and graceful androgynous winged elf. And it says, Greetings, travellers. I bid you a blessed day with hopes for laughter and a pleasant breeze to carry you. I am winged Lieutenant Estes, and this is Ilifar in the wind. And the elf gestures up at the tree. Uh, Dirt is at the front. 
And she's just like, I should not be talking to these people. And she <laughs> just like goes to the back. <laughs> oh. Don't eat these, Pentar. Pentar's like a centipede. She's just like gnashing her mandibles at them. And she uh she wild shapes back into Pentar and she's she like walks up and sniffs like they gestured she gestured at a tree. Mm -hmm. Just at a tree. She goes up and sniffs the tree. And uh, um, you um can't get to the tree yet as there is a barrier. But as oh. you sort of approach the elf, um mm -hmm. she sort of like ma the elf makes a gesture and um a part of the barrier opens and you can step through. I uh, I step through and I, I sniff the tree and I want to cast speak with plants and try mm -hmm. to talk to the tree. Okay, sure. What do you ask the tree? What is happening? <laughs> the tree is um, very slow when it answers. It's a very large old tree. It says, <laughs> Hey, the elves... <laughs> I live here. Yeah. They put up a barrier. Uh huh. To stop the metal creatures. Okay. But, I mean, why are my friends suddenly really bad druids? Because when you spend time here. Mm -hmm. It affects you. You become one with the plane. Is is that like a permanent thing? Like I'm gonna take home with me, or the tree sort of creaks, and it feels like an eternity before it answers again as it thinks, and it says, "I've never been." anywhere but here oh yeah fair okay um <laughs> so are these elves people edible can you eat them oh i wouldn't advise that mm, they but, okay. are my friends uh, it was hypothetical and pentar just like walks back to everybody else <laughs> <laughs> so and she just explains what she learned, like in full, which I I think Jessam had mentioned, but she was just like, mm. "You're gonna turn into animals, and you're gonna be animals forever. We need to leave." So Estes sort of like pays it, like is listening to everything that's going on, and then they, um, so sort of, they say to you, "Well, as far as I understand, um, it's a temporary effect." I'm sure you'll be fine when you return to wherever you're from. That doesn't sound very convincing. <laughs> <laughs> Am I understanding correctly that if the Modrons were going their normal path, they'd go like through where this force field is, and the force field is what is diverting them? Yes. Okay. Mm. Did you want to ask the elf anything? Um, you realize that your force field is diverting the Modrons and they're poisoning the water here. That's... They sort of think about it and then they say, that's that's a grave shame. Um, we just assumed they would cross the river on the other side. Is something preventing that? It wasn't meant to be a large diversion. They weren't meant to walk mm. up the river. I guess we haven't investigated the river itself, so we should probably do that. And they say, I mean, there's a whole town living here. I'm, they would, the Modrons would destroy it if they walked through. Yeah, I mean, we definitely don't want that to happen. Um, poisoning the water isn't great either. Maybe there's something else involved. The elf nods and they say, um, if there's anything we can help with, um, let us know. Are we able to go observe what's happening further down the path? 
the Modrons are taking. Yeah, if you want to go and head up, follow the march and f- ford the river, you can see what's going on. Yeah, I think I'd like to do that. Okay, so you head over to the river, and you don't even have to cross it before you can see on the opposite bank there is just this enormous wall of thorns. There is no way to cross this river. And so the Modrons mm. have just turned and are marching upstream now, looking for mm. a way across. And as you sort of stand there looking at the barrier, you can see through the gaps in the thorns, there are brown, like flashes of brown robes on the other side and occasionally chanting drifts on the breeze. What? What? Hmm. Hmm. Do Who we are have... these people? Uh, yeah. Mm. Do I recognize yes. any of the chanting? Uh, do a... I... No, actually, it's not Dustman chanting, if that's what you're inferring. Or just, like, if, if I've heard it before. like a, a... Oh, okay, yeah, you can do history. Yeah. Or history, whatever. Or um, religion, if you want, is, what's best. Is Miga small enough to, like, cry? Um, possibly not. That okay. is a dirty 20. Um, me. you've heard druidic ceremonies with this sort of chanting. Sometimes oh, okay. Pentar does chants like this when you're doing your weird experiments. Oh, okay, and I'm, yeah, I'm with, probably with more coughing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah. like, hey, Matt Pentar, did you, these are these are your your blood, so just go, why don't you go talk to him? I don't know. She, like, scrambles over because she didn't hear it originally. Does she hear, does she recognize it? Uh, they are cleansing chants. Okay, so nothing that would freak her out. It's land healing that's going on. Mm. Um, that's okay. They're they're not doing anything bad. But they're in robes. <laughs> <laughs> they must be evil. We're in robes. <laughs> and she like looks down. And she's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're just they're just trying to to fix things. Oh, the river! They're trying to clean the river from the mm. Madra. Yes. Oh. oh. Mm. Some of the thorns suddenly start to part, and then a female druid comes through, and then the thorns close up again after her. And she sort of looks at you and she's like, "Yes, you're disturbing." I just like push Pentard in front. <laughs> 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 so this, this like disgusting tieflings like push towards her and it's just like you're disturbing our <laughs> ritual with your noise state uh, your business we're here to find out what's happening pintar just like gestures wildly around like and are... points at Mercy. Mercy <laughs> steps forward and is like, what is going on with your thorn wall? <laughs> she says, if you must know, we are cleaning the land. Uh, some of the blood was spilled out through a portal here, and the land will be corrupted forever if we don't clean it up. I have a real life beast <laughs> creature invading my space. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh! It's Clara. Okay. Um, but you realize as you're doing this, your thorns are keeping the Modrons out, and now they're polluting the water. She says, "Temporary pollution is regrettable, yes, but eternal corruption is far worse." I think you'll agree. I mean, when you put it that way. I mean, if you wish to aid us, and we can clean it faster. Is there something we can do to help, and then the thorn walls can come down? Yes, if you can. Are you are you good at cleaning? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My time has come. <laughs> Mistake has been made here. This is the final boss. Let's get your emergency <laughs> stick. So, I do like a Sailor Moon transformation, but instead of like a pretty outfit, I've got like industrial yellow gloves and stuff that go on as I spin around. <laughs> so the thorns part, and you're allowed in, and you can just see there is a um, thick, dark demon ichor 
Um, there are limbs, fiendish limbs, sprue, sprawled all over the place. And it's just the aftermath of just this horrendous battle. And you can see that there are parts of it have been cleared and there's druids chanting and banging their staffs into the ground and various things. And she says, what do you intend to do to help? Um, am I able to do... Uh... Something like an arcana check to figure out how one gets rid of demon ichor? Sure. That's pretty good. Um, a total of 19. Okay. Um, I mean, you're used to dealing with darkish, fiendish things, I suppose. Your family aren't the sunniest of souls. Um, yeah. And you think that maybe if uh, some of the others could clear the limbs away, maybe burn them or something, prestidigitate the blood, and then with the right incantations and rituals that maybe Pentar can help you with, then the land can be cleaned. Okay. Mercy yeah. immediately goes into micromanaging mode. <laughs> and she's like, Miga, pick up all the treasure. Yes. <laughs> um... <laughs> See, we probably could have burned him if somebody didn't get <laughs> wasted. Um, me start like digging around, like picking up random things and just like putting them in her bag. Um, those of you who can press to digitate, do so. Um, the rest help clear away uh, blood. And Pentar, can you help? with your druid magic to help with the rituals? Oh, rituals, yes. She's been like looking around like, this is beautiful. Like I'm gonna plant so many spores, just like like grabbing Dirge's arm and shaking it like, look at this, this is the best. <laughs> so she's, yes, she will help. And then Mercy's just going around prestidigitating gooey patches and her broom is like on its own all over the clearing. Dirge will just play the the uh, ocarina that she got to give people cleaning music. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, is there anything Levity's doing in particular? You're muted. Probably just um, helping uh, Miga with like gathering like the um, the junk. Yeah, keeping Miga on task because every be like, look, look. Look. Yeah. Look. Miga, like, nobody <laughs> yeah. knows, like, she would give everybody a little bit of a drink, but she knows she didn't give anything to Miga, so she has, like, these little, like, juice boxes for her. Like, yes. here, have one of these juice boxes. <laughs> They're probably from, like, Lyra's stash. Yeah. yeah. Right. Is, um, S4, uh, S34N also, like, with his little fork, like, and his little... What are these? I don't know. You know where they are. Uh, like picking <laughs> stuffing up, and they're just like showing each other. Yeah, yeah. The treasure. Yeah, and like, <laughs> and in his like, little, he's like, no, no. In his little hand, he's got like a demon finger with a big long nail on it. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then uh, you and, like, show Levity's him like on task, on task. <laughs> and then you're like, oh hey, I've got this, and it's like a bit of a hairy tail. And then um, S34 and is like, oh but. And holds up like a bit of like twisted horn that's been sheared off. Yes. It's all burnt at the end. So you're getting tons of great treasure. Yes, we have so much treasure. Uh, the paladins. Uh, how are you vanquishing the evil? Um, Lyra's gonna be praying to Selune um, in order to aid the group. Um, she's gonna try her hardest and take a deep breath and She'll be like, and, and, and help us, help our friends. And she'll be like, you know, mumbling. And, and um, she'll kind of keep an eye on, on Miga and, and Gil specifically as well, just in case anything happens. And like when she sees Miga hold up the deep or like the, the, like the weird tail or like whatever she's picking up, she kind of cringes a little bit. And then she's just like, okay, but everything's going to be fine. <laughs> she's just like walking over and like trying to help everybody else um, as best as she can while she kind of prays. Mm hmm Okay, so you are... Oh, sorry, Gil. Sorry, Gil. What are you doing? 
skill is super unhelpful. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's why we specifically know why. <laughs> it's mostly because he's like, oh, I should pray too. But every time he like tries to quiet his mind for like guidance or something, he'll like hiccup or burp. And now instead of the multicolored bubbles, it's like a multicolored bubble, but there's a ton of cat hair in it. And he'll like look around to see if anybody saw it and then just like kind of like push it in a puddle of acre or something and just kinda like oh Can I get another constitution save from everyone? Oh Christ. I would love to ruin my life. Thank you. Oh, no. I got a, I got a oh high number. Oh my god. Oh, no. I'm really good at saves, I roll a one. Wow. Oh damn, y'all. Dad, you, your face gets like narrower and pointier and furrier. And you're just basically pretty much a walking human rat now. Oh, great. No, I just <laughs> look, I look like I just came from a, a, a fast food restaurant, possibly with pizza. Yeah. And <laughs> I got a 22. Things. Miga's fine. Miga's fine. Miga's perfect. In every way. <laughs> I got a 14. Okay, um, you're fine. Uh, Mercy? A total of eight. Uh, Mercy! Your hands start becoming very hoof-like. Oh no! Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's gonna look gonna ridiculous like that? in the yellow gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Is your mage oh. hand also a hoof? Yes. Shiny hoof. <laughs> it is. Mage hoof. Mage hoof. <laughs> oh. got a mage hoof. Um, levity. I got a nineteen. Oh, you're okay then. You've still just got oh. a stripy tail. Gil. Uh oh. No. 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 Two of them. Um. So yeah, Gil, your face sort of changes. The fur gets thicker. You sprout whiskers. And you look like a tabaxi now. Oh, I'm handsome. <laughs> he thinks he's handsome. Uh, Lyra? Um, I got a 12. Um, you're okay, your feathers just get a bit thicker. Mm, she does not like this. S3 foreign grows a kitty tail. <gasps> But that's cute, she said. Yeah. <laughs> Does he sound like those little Nico memes when it returns his head to his like little ears where it is? It shoo 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 shoo. Oh. Mika is now digital display. Yeah, he... Mika is enamored with like the ear tail. I just imagine he like now a... instead of like flavor packets, he has catnip packets. Oh. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> like, You'll love that too. He's like, Please. yes. Oh no. Oh no, Gil. So he, he hadn't really um <laughs> sorry. Um he hadn't really noticed the ears, but then like the tail whips around and he looks at it and he looks at you and he goes, Me Mika too I have grown a tentacle. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Miga like gently like grabs onto it and like waves it in his like in front of his little eye and goes, "You're a kitty. You're a kitty cat now." And he sort of blinks and then he looks at Jism, who's now asleep again on Dirgy's toadstool, and then looks back and then he's just like closes his eye and lies down. <gasps> yes, I heard so just like, but and then he just like every so often he just goes. Me ow! <laughs> I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so nice. I'm dead. Aww, that's so cute. So cute. My little robot son. So adorable. So you spend your time helping these druids, and you manage to get the land cleaned. And they take down the wall of thorns, and then the march turns and starts heading back. Ooh. So some like the some of them. All the march that is in the river just suddenly walks out of the river and the water starts flowing more clearly again. Mm. And Jisum wakes up and says, Hmm, are we done at last? Yes! Mm. Now how do we get home? And I'm like trying to shake the gloves off of my hoof hand. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I'm sure the Seely Fae can help if we go back to them. 
And Dirge the is like ones Pentar tried to eat? Mm, yes. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe they'll overlook that since you oh. cleaned the land. Mm. You know how like rats like clean their little faces? Like that's what Dirge is doing. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So you can make your way back to the Sealy Court if you wish. Is everyone yes. muted? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Jason, Jason sort of stays awake this time, points his paw and leads you back. And when you get back to the Sealy Court, the Fae are very grateful. They take a wide berth around Pentar. <laughs> um, and they say that they can't get you back to Sigil, but they have something, they do have somewhere else they can take you, that's off of the Beastlands. And also, oh, okay. they have gifts for you. Oh, more oh. presents! Oh. Mm. Many presents. Oh. I don't oh, want any. <laughs> mm -mm. No, no <laughs> thank you. So, um, Mercy, a fay steps to you and holds out a decanter and then tips it up while saying Fonz and water pours out and it just pours and pours and pours and you don't think this decanter could hold that much water. Oh, wow. I, um, I don't know, take my two hooves and just kind of like try to delicately <laughs> put them around this bottle, <laughs> trying not to drop or crush it. Uh, Pentar, you are handed a small glass jar of a thick mixture that smells faintly like aloe. Uh, thanks. It's, it's thanks, great. I hate it. Yeah, I hate it. What is it? <laughs> um, one of the Fae um, has a similar jar and they take a bit of the ointment out and rub it on um, Tristan's shoulder and it heals up. He's just like glaring at me the whole time, like. <laughs> <laughs> just like, okay, I just put it in my bag of screaming. Oh God. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> uh, Liberty, you are handed a beautiful silk rope, and then the face oh. is Leviosa, and the rope just starts to climb on its own. <gasps> oh, wonderful. Uh, Dirge, you are given a pouch of what appears to be very fine sand, and the Fae oh, give, handing you this giggles and then throws a pinch in the air and vanishes. Oh, well, that, I mean, I guess that's useful. Thanks. Also, you're gone now, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> um, sand of the true death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lyra, you are handed a brooch shaped like an eye. Ooh, uh, Lyra will take it and look at it and kind of look back and be like, um, <clears throat> thank, thank you for your, for your gracious gift. And she'll quickly put it away in her bag. But as you were holding it, you felt like it had some sort of shielding protection. Hmm. Okay. All right. She'll, she'll take note of that and just quickly without looking at it, put it in her bag. Mika, you are handed Yay. a small glass sphere. And the face says, Lumos! And the sphere illuminates. Ooh, and then like Mika, like, holds it, it and... Yeah, it sort of floats in the air towards you. Oh, Mika loves this. Mika's probably gonna break this. Is it? Um, Gil, a face steps up to you and goes to hand you a rod. But as you take it, it appears to be frozen in the air and you cannot budge it. The Fae giggles <laughs> and presses a button like, on it. Magic! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this Fae giggles and presses a button, and then you can now take the rod. Awesome. Gil loves it. Gil's having a fantastic adventure this week, guys. <laughs> Up at the alchemist shop more often. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, thank you! And then he, like, tastes it in his mouth again. He's like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the Fae all sort of giggle again and fly around you. And then you realise, Mercy, your hands are fine. Levity, your <gasps> tail's gone back to normal. Oh. Dirge, you're no longer needing to clean your little paws. Oh, I'm not cute anymore. No, all oh. of your animal traits. Lyra, your feathers. 
Go, oh, Gil, you. you're returning back to yourself. Uh, yeah, Penta, everyone is stop. Their world shapes are going. You can calm down. Thank God. And the face say, <laughs> here we are. And as you step out of the Sealy Court this time, you're initially confused because this isn't the savannah you entered it from. There are trees here too, but you realise you're in an orchard of apple trees and the sweet ripe red flute fruits are hanging heavily on the boughs. And can anyone do me a perception check? Oh boy. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, my perception. I got four. I got a thirteen also. Nineteen. Nice. I got a 14. Uh, 11. Okay. Also 11. Uh, Levsy, it's actually perfect that you got the highest check here. Because you realise that you are in the home of your goddess, Lyra. You're in Arborea. And as you peer through the trees, you can see the familiar shimmer of a portal. And within it, you can see um, build the outlines of buildings. And this is the entrance to the gate town of Sylvania. So and that's where we're going to stop. Yeah. Oh, go on, oh, no, go yeah. on. Oh. Oh, so you just see the biggest smile. It's like, we're going to have some fun here. And then she just like gathers you and starts to push you through. <laughs> George is like, thanks, I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. The name of this episode, thanks, I hate it. <laughs> I'll add that onto next week's notes. <laughs> Welcome back to space. Yes, I hate it. <laughs> Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Yay. Yay. This episode was like Christmas. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. Everybody got yeah. something. Yeah. Regular oh, Christmas yeah. and Harry Potter Christmas. Yeah. I just wonder how obvious the Harry Potter spells were. <laughs> yeah. I added a flail to my inventory just oh my after God. I... Yes. Oh my boy. favorite part was like completely bypassing half of the fight. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. It's Christmas. <laughs> oh, we <just> scorpion. <laughs> and then we celebrated by giving Miga another dangerous weapon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. You know, probably there's a way taking... to like add poison damage to stuff on D and D Beyond. Um, I have to read about the wand too because I think if you expel like all of the like all of the charges, you have to roll a D twenty. Oh yeah, or it explodes, right? Yeah, or it explodes. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, no. No. Look it up. Look it up. Okay. So, isn't it there said... a chance that Limbo just negates it? No. <laughs> um, okay, so it has seven charges. While holding it, you can use an action to expand one of its charges and create a harmless burst of multicolored light at a point you can see up to six feet away. So the wand regains one d six plus one expended charges daily at dawn. If you expend the wand's last charge, roll a d20. On a one, the wand erupts into a harmless pyrotechnic display and is destroyed. Roll it, roll, yes. roll it, roll it, roll, roll it, it, roll it. it. <laughs> we'll see what happens to the- If this ruins your flail, though, I, I feel very bad. <laughs> I got an 18. Hey, 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 cool, yay! <laughs> then you're good. My wine is mine. That was a win-win roll, really. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone can see flail now. Mm-hmm. So we should probably go around and find out where everyone is for the next week and where we can all be found. Me on my couch. Uh, let's start with you, Shauna. Hey, Shauna. Um, Flying Cirrus on um, on Twitter. Um, show this week is going to be just uh, Waffle Talk this week, and that's going to be... Um, after um, DCA at 9 p.m. on uh, 9 p.m. Eastern on um, Parscar RPG, where you talk about the latest dice camera action. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Um, my friend and yours, Hadil, what are you up to this week? Hello. Um, I have played Dungeons and Dragons literally every day. This week. holy crap. Um, next week you can find me on Trapped in the Birdcage on Thursdays from five to. Whenever Holly decides to end it with Holly, Holly's my DM, and uh, you can find me on Twitter, Twitty Such, and Instagram also is Twitty Such, and Twitch is Twitty Such. As a matter of fact, everywhere Twitty Such, as many Twitty Suches as you want. 
Just enough for me to go around. I'll have all of them, thank you. Uh, Holly, hi. Can't hog everything from the group, Maz. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Commander Holly, all over the internet. And yeah, I will be playing Trapped in the Birdcage this week on Thursday. Uh, Hadil will be there. We're going to have great fun. Um, it's usually some body horror, so that's great. Um, oh, body I'll, horror. Also, <laughs> I'll also be in di on Dice Camera Action, which is before Waffle Talk, so that they have something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, who knows what'll happen because it's usually horrific. Um, though we have a house now, which is weird. Uh, and what else am I doing? And then I'm here, and uh, I'll be streaming on twitch.tv slash Commander Holly on Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, say hi, it's gonna be great. I have a new show tomorrow where I'm just gonna just answer questions and we're just gonna talk about mental health and advice. So come on by and cry. Mm. Is that on Twitch or on YouTube? It's going to be on Twitch, on, okay. on my on twitch.tv slash Commander Holly. Isn't, Maybe Paco will be there. Is it Commander come, Mental Health. Mm -hmm. Isn't like Come it. On By and Cry the tagline for DCA, though? I mean, that's the tagline for my life, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crying is a free action. It is. I was going to say, is. Uh, it's all yeah. a free action. TK, hi. Unmute. <laughs> no, no, I'm a, I'm I'm ready because I just I was like I'm gonna put those session up notes right now instead of waiting. <laughs> Hi, you won't get me this time. Okay, I'm TK. They them. Um, I write spooky stories on the internet. You can find those spooky stories at TK joins the fray on Twitter. You can find them at tkjwrites.com. Maybe if I pay the domain subscription this month, um, I don't know. Uh, and you can find me Thursdays on WebDM, uh, playing Land Between Two Rivers, where I play my sociopathic lizard folk ranger, which is awesome. Uh, and pretty soon, I think next week, I might have another announcement, but we'll see how it goes. Whatever. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe, hi. Hi. Um, my name's Chloe Christine. Dean. You can find me on the internet at Hey It's Chloe, C L O E, on Twitter and on Instagram at Hey It's Chloe Christine. Um, I draw a lot of fun things. I talk a lot about D and D and how it's important to me in my life. I basically tweet that I think every week now. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've been drawing a lot more. I've been designing some little characters that I'm going to be posting throughout the next few days. So I already Ooh. posted one, my little bird character named Speck. Oh, so, that's so like cute. New, really she's cute. My new baby. I love her. So much. Back. I, in yeah. this house, we love and protect. <laughs> yes, it's true. She is a child. Yeah, no, I, I love, I love, I'm making a lot of cool characters. Um, So I'm going to be posting those there. And I'm also like, I have commissions and stuff going on right now, too. So if you want your D&D &D character drawn, hit me up because I will draw them. Um, But yeah, Do just it. find me on the internet. Yeah, find me on the internet. Um, Say hello. Uh, hang around, say hey, and yeah. Lisa, hi. Hi, I'm Lisa. Um, among the many different things I do, I am one of the community managers for the Adventurers League, uh, D&D's official play. And uh, we just started a monthly talk show on this very channel. Uh, it just happened on Friday, the first episode. And I think that will be hitting the YouTube uh, page tomorrow. Uh, so if you didn't catch it Friday live, definitely check it out uh, sometime this week. Awesome. And don't forget Behold Her either. Listen to that. Oh, yeah. Give it the thumbs oh, up the... on iTunes. Yes. Behold Her podcast. The next episode won't be till August 13th. But if you like hearing amazing, inspiring women who love tabletop RPGs talk about the cool things they do, then look that up uh, and give it stars and leave a review because those really make my day. Cool, cool. And not just women too. You have all sorts on there. Just non-men. Uh, yeah, like n marginalized genders. So women, uh, non-binary individuals. Um, yeah. yeah. Lots of lots of people who just love tabletop RPGs. People that don't normally have a voice. You're you're giving them that voice. It's great. Oh yeah! Yay! 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 Kayla, hi. Hi, I'm Kayla, and you can find me on the internet at k a y n c l i. And I'm not doing anything else this week. Um, 
Hadil and I came out with a Patreon called Bramblefoot Adventures, where we will be giving you the good, good tabletop content to add to your games. And if you get on by August 1st, that's after that point, we'll start rolling out that month's, this coming month's stuff. So it's going to be good. It's very cute this month so far. We're very excited. Um, other than that, next Sunday, I'll be coming to you live from the beach, and hopefully the internet won't suck. We'll see. So <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot to plug our Patreon because I'm good. No, it's okay. I covered it. I got it. You're a gem. A Everyone's peach. doing just so many cool things, and here's me, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't do things. I'm too busy because I play too many homebrew games. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I played my campaigns for well over a year, and so I'm not going to bail on these folks. They're great. But... Um, when I'm not doing that, when I'm not running this, I am making the yarn art. So hit me up on Twitter or my website, that's also Masmataz, it's .co.uk, because if you can't tell by my voice, I'm in the UK. It is almost 4am here, so that's fantastic. That's okay, I'm on Pacific time, don't worry. Um, yeah, uh, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you all my players, as ever, every week for joining us, for um, all my disaster pals. I love running this game for you all. It's so much fun. I can't wait till next week already. <laughs> um, anything else anyone wants to add? No. Nope. No, nope, we're all good. And then we will say goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.